Hello everyone, this is Shannon from That's So Poe, and today I am wrapping up my reading for the new release-a-thon, which is a readathon that I co-hosted along with some amazing other booktubers, Kristen at Kristen L. SFF Reader, Rachel at RK Stumbling Bear, Rhea at The Book Finch, and Angela at Literature Science Alliance. Um, for August, just focusing on all sorts of new releases, this was such a fun readathon, you guys. I was so happy to participate in this, so thank you very much to Kristen for coming up with the idea, setting everything up, and inviting us all to participate. It was so much fun, and I was able to read a ton of new releases, especially because I've been trying to read more, and I just haven't necessarily been reading as many as I wanted. This was the perfect excuse to pick up a bunch of things. So I ended up reading 15 new releases in August. Um, 12 of those were actually on my TBR, uh, and three of them were just ones that I picked up for fun when I saw them and they appealed to me. And I just had a really great reading month, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up, tell you about what I read. Um, I won't go into tons of depth here, but I do have uh, weekly wrap-ups where I talk about everything, so check those out if you want more details or wanna see the content warnings or anything like that. And if you make a wrap-up, make sure that you use the hashtag new release -a -thon. 2022 so that we can find that and add it to our playlist. So let me talk about first the books that I read that weren't on my TBR, starting with Nettle and Bone by T. Kingfisher. So this is sort of a fairy tale style of story with a princess who has to complete some impossible tasks and gets together sort of a ragtag group of people to help her in uh, assassinating a prince who's not a good guy. So this story is something that uh, I really loved the first half of it. It has like this kind of dark fairy tale feel, um, but the second half wasn't quite so much my style because it went a little bit silly and just, um, you know, kind of that ragtag group of people, that sort of thing. But lots of other people are absolutely loving this. Um, so this satisfied the prompts of title without articles and host rec since Angela at Literature Science Alliance really enjoyed this one. Next, I finished A is for B by Alan Heck, which is a children's picture book published by Levine Querido, which is a publisher I absolutely love. Um, and this picture book is basically just an alphabet book that has the different letters of the alphabet and an animal, but instead of using the name of the animal with English words, it uses kind of words from all over the world, all kinds of different languages. So this is a multilingual alphabet book, and it sort of shows how all of these animals have different names in different languages and so for example A is for B where it shows a bunch of different languages where the word for B starts with the letter A um, and the illustrations in this are super cool so this was just a super fun multilingual children's picture book absolutely loved it this satisfied the prompts of a book you have not heard about including hard mode and be published and new to you author and the last book I finished that wasn't on my TBR is Valentina Salazar is Not a Monster Hunter by Zoraida Cordova. This is a middle grade contemporary fantasy story about a girl whose family used to be monster protectors, but then her dad was in an accident. Um, they lost him when he was dealing with a very dangerous monster. And now her family's living a pretty normal life, except she wants to go back on the road and go protect all of these magical monsters. So it's it is a lot of adventure, a lot of family, a lot of heart, and really good things that really excellent middle grade does, so I loved this one. This satisfied the prompt of BIPOC author. Now moving on to the books that I read that were from my TBR, starting with one of my most anticipated books of the year, The Oleander Sword by Tasha Suri. This is the second book in the Burning Kingdom series, and it is such a great series. I actually have a standalone review for this book, so I will link it below. I loved it. It is this epic Indian-inspired um, fantasy series that has such cool magic and world building and a lot of political intrigue and really morally great characters. and romance and just everything wonderful. This is such a good series and such a good sequel. Really loved it. And it satisfied the prompts of BIPOC author, favorite author, sequel, LGBTQ plus rep, and non-USA author um, because Tasha Suri is from the UK. 
Next, I finished Data and Divination by Andy C. Buchanan, which is the fourth novella in the Windflower series. I have a series review for the first few books in that series, so I'll link that below. And this was everything that I was hoping it would be. This is a super um, gentle and cozy series that is basically mystery fantasy romance. And in this fourth book, we follow a middle-aged woman who used to be part of a witchy commune um, growing up, but it was kind of a toxic place, so she left um, and has just been basically a data analyst in the city since, until her nephew, who she's never met before, comes kind of needing a place to stay. And for his sake, she tries to get involved in the Wellington witchy community, which is a much healthier one, and sort of builds new community and also finds romance. Um, this is just a super sweet novella, super sweet story. This satisfies the prompts of a book you have not heard about because I haven't heard anybody else talking about this one, including Hard Mode Indie Published, Disabled or Neurodivergent Author, including Hard Mode Intersectional, a novella, including Hard Mode Not Tour.com, because this is basically self published, uh, and Title Without Articles, as well as Genre Bender, including Hard Mode More Than Two Genres, since this is Mystery, Fantasy, and Romance. Favorite author, sequel, LGBTQ plus rep, including hard mode, not LRG, um, because the author, Andy C. Buchanan, is non-binary and the main character in this is bisexual. Uh, also, non-USA author, because Buchanan is from New Zealand. Next, I finished issue 21 of File Lit Magazine, which is a SFF short story magazine by Black authors. And this magazine issue was uh, really interesting. It kind of was a mixed bag for me, but I loved one of the stories in this. It had like this really cool um, sort of black mirror dystopian sci-fi type vibes with some interesting questions about how we trust technology. Um, and there was a really good essay in this as well about how important um, it is for black boys to see themselves in books about magic and things like that. So yeah, mixed bag overall, but some really quality stories and essays in this. So this satisfied the prompts of title without articles, entire magazine, BIPOC authors, new to you authors, since some of the authors in this, actually all of them I think were new to me, uh, and non-USA author, including hard mode from the global south, because some of the authors were Nigerian. Next, I finished The Way Spring Arrives and Other Stories, edited by Yu Chen and Regina Kanyu Wang. This is a short story anthology um, by Chinese authors translated into English. Uh, there's also some nonfiction essays in this, um, and all of the authors are women or non-binary folk. Uh, this is a collection that I buddy read with two of the other co-hosts for this readathon, Kristen at Kristen L. SFF Reader and Rachel at RK Stumbling Bear, and this was such a great collection to read together. It has a lot of sci-fi elements, but also a lot of fantasy elements, pulls in a lot of Chinese mythology. And then also the nonfiction essays about women writing Chinese SFF today, or about um, kind of the, the way that you translate and the choices involved. Some really cool nonfiction essays in this as well. So this was a, a, a really good collection, even though, you know, not every story worked personally for me. Overall, this satisfied the prompts of short story, including hard mode, an entire anthology or collection, translated, including hard mode, women, translators, and authors, uh, BIPOC authors, genre benders, because some of these were more like science fantasy, uh, new to you author, lots of these were new to me, LGBTQ plus rep, including hard mode, not L or G, um, because some of the authors in this were non-binary, uh, non-USA author, including hard mode global south, because the authors in this were Chinese, and host rec, because Rea at the Book Finch had recommended this. They had done uh, this book as a kind of book club book choice for their shorts and sorcery club. So definitely check out their channel if you want even more about what this book was about. Then I read a couple of romances, both of which were by Jackie Lau. The first was The Unmatchmakers, and this is a really cute little story that takes place um, by the lakeside in the summer where a couple of uh, families get together, their friends, and spend a week together. Um, but two of the people fall in love with each other, even though their moms, who are friends with each other, 
don't really believe in love and try to keep them separated. So there's a lot of antics of the moms getting involved. Um, this was really interesting just because of how much it focused on family dynamics um, beyond just the romance between the two characters. And that family dynamics was where a lot of the conflicts came in. So there was a bit much family drama in this, but also it was just really neat how that played out and it had super good summer vibes. This satisfied the prompts of a book you have not heard about, a disabled author because Jackie Lau deals with some depression, novella including hard mode not tour.com, this was a Kobo original, a BIPOC author, favorite author, and non-USA author because Jackie Lau is Canadian. The other book was Her Unexpected Roommate by Jackie Lau. This is the fifth and final book in the Cider Bar Sisters contemporary romance series. Um, I have loved this series and this was a really great book to end it. It's basically about a woman who has a one night stand with a guy, uh, gets kind of ghosted, but a year later ends up kind of unexpectedly having him as a roommate and they have to get along with each other, except that they also still really like each other. Um, and so this was like really sweet. It was very gentle in a lot of ways, but it also deals with some pretty heavy topics. Um, the main character in this has some pretty severe depression that is treatment resistant and is still kind of suffering because her mom had committed suicide years before. And she just is somebody who is kind of has to live with mental health issues where it's not something that can be solved through therapy or through medication, um, although she has been trying for, for a decade or more. Um, and so just about her getting her happily ever after and, and her finding somebody who can be there with her um, and not, you know, uh, take that to heart when, when she's dealing with depression. So it has some really, really great rep for depression, but definitely content warnings for that because there's a lot of like um, her dealing with that but it was just a really sweet romance and a great end to this series so this satisfied the prompts of book you have not heard about including hard mode indie published because this is self-published uh, disabled author title without articles bipoc author favorite author sequel including hard mode series ender and non-usa author then I read a couple of poetry collections, starting with Woman Eat Me Whole by Ama Asanteva Diaka. This is a poetry collection that is all about womanhood and body and mental illness and kind of dealing with issues of the way that men treat women. A lot of very feminist themes in this. There's also just kind of a very visceral um, feel to many of these poems as they deal with the body and pain and things like that. So definitely an intense collection, but really solidly good. This satisfied the prompts of disabled author because she deals with mental illness, including hard mode intersectional, title without articles, BIPOC author, new to you author, non-USA author, including hard mode from the global south because the author is from Ghana, although she also lives in the US part-time, uh, and debut. The other poetry collection I read was Dream of the Divided Field by Yan Yi, who is a Chinese American trans poet. And these poems deal with issues of immigration, of being split between two places, and also that kind of gender transition. There's actually poems in this about top surgery, things like that. So really, really cool themes in this, great topics. The poems themselves, though, didn't necessarily speak to me all the time, especially because some of them were a bit graphic in terms of talking about surgery, that sort of thing. Um, but I think that it does some really, really cool work. So this satisfied the prompts of book you have not heard about, BIPOC author, new to you author, and LGBTQ plus author, including hard mode, less represented identities, since the author is trans. Then I read some middle grade novels, starting with Jennifer Chan is Not Alone by Tay Keller. This was a fantastic contemporary middle grade with some slight sci-fi elements. I have a standalone review for that, so I'll link it below. But this deals with such interesting themes of um, really bullying and isolation and ties that in with the kind of sci-fi elements of searching for alien life. It does such a great job at tackling some very tough issues for middle school students and bringing that in with great theming and just really, really great messaging. I loved this book. It was so good. This satisfied the prompts of book you have not heard about, title without articles, and BIPOC author. 
Then I finished Empty Smiles, which is the fourth and final book in the Small Spaces Middle Grade Contemporary Horror Series. This is a series about a group of friends who are dealing with some supernatural forces, including this guy, the Smiling Man, who keeps trying to basically capture them. And in this fourth book, it takes place during the summer at kind of like a state fair, and there are super creepy things, creepy dolls, creepy clowns, creepy funhouse mirrors, and they have to use their wits to outsmart the smiling man in order to kind of get him to leave them alone. Um, so it is super creepy and just really compelling. I loved reading this. Uh, this satisfied the prompts of title without articles, a favorite author, and sequel including hard mode series ender. Then I read The Woman in the Woods and Other North American Stories, edited by Kate Ashwin and Cal McDonald. This is sort of like a middle grade um, short story graphic novel collection um, where each of these stories is by a different author and artist um, and they are telling North American stories and so these are some like myths but also some things that are said in the past some things that are said in the present bringing those stories from many different tribes all across the US into these graphic novels and so just a really interesting uh, collection not every kind of art style and series worked for me but I thought it was super cool overall. This satisfied the prompts of short story, including hard mode, entire anthology, BIPOC author, new to you author, and LGBTQ+, including hard mode, less represented identities, because many of the authors and illustrators in this were trans or non-binary. And lastly, I finished a picture book that I absolutely loved, which was Gibberish by Young Vol. This is about a little boy who moves with his mom to a new country and he is going to his first day of school and everything around him sounds like gibberish. He can't understand anything um, until he starts to make a friend and they learn how to communicate. It is beautifully illustrated and just such a moving story. I totally cried at this. It was wonderful. This satisfies the prompts of book you have not heard about, including hard mode indie published, because this is published by Levine Kitty though. Title without articles, including hard mode, a single word, BIPOC author, new to you author, and debut. Okay, so those are all of the books that I read for the new release a -thon. It ended up being that 11 out of the 15 books that I read were by BIPOC authors, which is 73%, which means that I also got hard mode for the BIPOC square. Um, my overall bingo board ended up with everything checked off and actually more than one bingo for hard mode even, which I wasn't sure that I was gonna be able to do. So I really thoroughly enjoyed doing the bingo board. I enjoyed all of the reads that I had. I just enjoy the readathon in general. So if you guys have read any of the books that I read this month, or if you're interested in them, or if you want to tell me what you have read for new releaseathon, I would love to hear from you. Just leave me a comment down below.